So here is my B rotor flight controller test board here and I just wanted to go over this with you quickly. Uh, this is the B rotor right here and I have plugged into that the power module right here and that supplies power to it. Also supplies the current and voltage readout right there and over here is my battery clip right here where I can a JST connector where I can connect up the power to a battery. This is similar to what's on my plane so I'm just kind of prototyping it here and then the ESC comes off the other end of the power module right here and goes down to the motor and then I have an output here the video output of the OSD where I can plug on a monitor and look at it and here is the provided FTDI connector so that you can program the OSD that's underneath this board it has the built-in OSD over here is the connectors to go to the receiver like the uh, the center one is the RSSI and then there's one for PPM and SBUS so you can that comes with it as well okay so that's the basic layout the camera is right over here I got one of those little bitty cameras that runs off 5 volts and I've got it plugged into the input of the OSD and onto this 5 volt pin right here that comes off the rail right here. So that's supplying power to the camera. Okay, so that's the basic layout. Uh, now let's just hook it up to the monitor here and see what uh, firmware is on it right now from the factory. The B rotor came with Mini Wii OSD firmware release 1.5 and firmware version 2.31. To find out what firmware is loaded on your B rotor, all you have to do is plug it in the USB port and then connect with Clean Flight. Once you're connected, go down to the CLI at the bottom here, click that. And then in the commands down here, type in dump. And then hit enter. And then if you scroll back to the top, you'll see that the B rotor came from the factory with a Clean Flight B rotor F3 version 1.11.0, January 13, 2016. So that's what's on it. And then to get out of this CLI, all you have to do is type exit in the command line right there and hit enter. And it exits out. Since the B rotor uses the multi Wii firmware for the OSD, we need to use the multi Wii OSD configuration tool. So we go to mwosd.com, and basically, this is what it looks like. Just scroll down to the bottom of the page, click the MWOSD downloads page right here. Now we saw that we had 1.5 uh, MultiWii 1.5 OSD, so we need the MultiWii OSD configuration 1.5 to match it. Unless we want to upgrade to 1.6 and get the latest, but my advice is just stick with what the factory put on there. So I'm going to use this one. So we click that and then we go ahead and download it. Okay, once it's downloaded you'll get a folder like this. It actually says Scarab OSD R15. Just open that up and you'll see the stuff inside it right there. But yeah, that's what we need is that file right there. And then you can just drag it to your folder and put it there. So now let's go ahead and run it. Now to run it, we just go ahead and open this up, go to the GUI folder, and then I'm going to use the Windows 32-bit version, and there is the GUI right there. Let's go ahead and plug in the B rotor. Um, no, we're not plugging in the B rotor, but we're plugging in the FDI tool that connects to the B rotor cable that goes to the MWOSD. So we've connected that. Now we're going to go ahead and run the MWOSD GUI. Takes a little bit to come up. There it is. Now it's on COM7 right there. So we select that COM port. And then here's our screen right here. And there's all the information. 
So let's just go ahead and keep all that information that's already on there. We won't change anything yet. We're just checking it out. We'll go ahead and hit write down here. And you can see it's writing. And now that's done. Once it's done writing, we can go ahead and close the program. So we can disconnect the COM port. Close COM port right here. Now let's go ahead and see what's on the screen when we connect it back to our monitor. So here's what's on the screen now. I have a battery voltage down here, which is not right because I need to calibrate it in clean flight, but it does show the battery voltage. And then we got the time running down here. And up here we actually have the barometer. The barometer is showing right there. And from what I can tell it does work. When I move the board up and down it kind of moves a little bit so the barometer appears to be working. So I added the uh, current down here and that showed up. But I'm still not getting the artificial horizon so maybe I have to update the OSD firmware see if that makes any change. Because the artificial horizon didn't show up on the B rotor I looked on the forums and found out that the solution was to reflash the uh, MWOSD on the B rotor with uh, the version of the firmware that you can download from MWOSD. So that's what I'm going to do here and hopefully it works. Uh, apparently the firmware from the factory has a bug in it and the artificial horizon won't show up. So first thing I need to do here is go to MWOSD.com and then scroll down and find the install guide right here. Click on the install guide and then this has the steps to update the firmware. Now the first thing we gotta do is download the MWOSD software pack. So I just go ahead and uh, open this link here and then scroll down to 1.5 which is what is on there from the factory right here click this and download it. Okay, so it's downloading right here at the bottom. Okay, once the MWOSD package is downloaded and I've got 1.5, you can just drop down this arrow and go to show folder and here's the zip file right here. I also downloaded 1.6 just in case I want to use it later. But let's go into 1.5. It's a zip file but we can still explore it and the folder we want is the MWOSD and inside that is all the code and when we use the Arduino program we'll be picking this one right here. I'm, I'm MW underscore OSD INO. Okay so what we're going to do is just go ahead and pull this zip file or go in here actually and pull this, uh, this Scarab OSD folder onto our computer. Just drag it over to our computer on the desktop so we can extract it. And that's easy. You just left click on it, drag, and then drop it on the desktop. And then it'll go ahead and extract it. So here's the file we just extracted to the desktop right here. So we got that step done. Now let's go back to the directions, to the install directions. The next thing we need to do is get the Arduino uh, IDE interface so that we can do the programming. So I'm going to click on that, open that up. Alright, now we got to pick the version we want. I need the Windows version and it's got the installer and the Windows zip file for the non-admin install. Well, I'll just go ahead and get the installer here. Okay, here's the installer. Let me pull this down a little bit so we can see more. There we go. And it's got contribute and download or just download. Pick the one you want to use. I'm going to do just download. And now it's downloading. Okay, now that the Arduino IDE is downloaded, let's drop down this arrow again and we'll show the folder. And there's the install file, it's just an EXE, so let's go ahead and install it. Double clicking 
And now we're going to install. We're going to agree, do next. Install. So this is where it's going. And it's installing. Alright, so let's go back to the directions. We've got our software package for the OSD. We've got our Arduino programming interface, the IDE. Now we just have to connect the breakout board with the proper headers to connect to the OSD hardware. Now I already have that, so I'll show you how to hook that up in a minute. So now let's go ahead and start flashing. There's a testing procedure here, but I'm going to go ahead and just flash it. So connect the OSD to FTDI adapter and that to the PC. So let's do that next. So here's the little cable that came with the B rotor that has the FTDI interface pins. So I'm going to plug on my little FTDI adapter right here which has the USB cable plugged into it and then I'll just plug the other end into the PC over here. So I have the FTDI board connected to the pin header from the B rotor. Now I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the other end of the USB cord. Next step is to start the Arduino IDE and select the file, which is this file right here, the MWOSD. Okay, so we know that the MW underscore OSD is in this folder right here. So let's go ahead and start the Arduino IDE. Okay, I've got the Arduino IDE up here. And the folder we want to go to is under here. Okay, so next thing to do is open, the, so select file. So file, open. All right. Now we need to go to the desktop, find our folder. Here it is. Go in there, go to an MWOSD, and we want to open this one. So we'll open that one. And there it is. Okay, let's see, what's the next step? A new IDE will appear. Close the other window, is no longer needed. If you have not already done so, make sure the following, the MWOSD Arduino window, choose the appropriate board. Uh, and they tell you the board is the Arduino Pro or Pro Mini 16 megahertz at Mega 328. Select the proper serial port from the serial port. Okay. So let's go here, tools, and uh, let's go to board. It's got this one, Arduino Pro and Pro Mini. I think that's the right one. So I'll select that one. Select the uh, serial port. Okay, where's the serial port? Port right here. COM7. Alright, because that's the only one that was there, right? Okay, now we'll go down to edit the config H tab to select the correct OSD hardware, flight controller or aircraft. That's right here, Con config H tab. Now I think what we want is clean flight. So I think what we want to do is comment this one out and uncomment this one. Okay. Click on the upload button and reserve the serial console at the bottom of the Arduino. So sex is noted by white text on the black background. I don't know if we have to save that. I don't see anything that says save. So I'll just leave it. All right. Now we need to go to the Upload button. I think it's this one. Upload. You can see it coming up right there. And that's Verify. So let's just do Upload and see what happens. So it's going through it. It says low memory available. Stability problems may occur. But other than that it didn't say anything. Let's do a Verify now. Well, it looks like it worked. All right, next let's go ahead and uh, open up the configuration tool and see if we can just talk to the, the OSD and see if it worked properly. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and launch the uh, GUI here for the OSD, MWOSD GUI. And let's just find out if that flash did, in fact, give me the artificial horizon, or if it worked at all. So the cable's still plugged in. I haven't unplugged it from the PC. I just uh, closed the Arduino interface. Okay, let's go to COM7. It's already up. I guess it auto-connected. But there it is right there. It looks like all the information is still there, and the stuff that I'd put in is the same, like these two are still green, and I got 10.1 for the voltage alarm, and these two are still green, and I got 100 for the amp alarm, so that's all the same, and these are all green and selected. So it looks like it's still working. So let's plug it up to the ground station screen and see if the artificial horizon is indeed there. So I'm going to go ahead and close the COM port and unplug it. Let's go ahead and plug up the battery and see what we get on the screen over here. Plug up the battery and here's the screen coming up. So we still have the same versions 1.5 and 2.31 and okay there's the artificial horizon now. We still have our voltage, our amps, our time, and the mode here is acro but now well it's the altitude is working as well and we have the uh, artificial horizon there. Now, if I move the flight controller around, you can see the artificial horizon is moving as well. It's moving in the same direction as the board, but uh, it is working. So that's it. We got that problem solved. So to get the voltage to display on the OSD on the B rotor, I went into Clean Flight and under the Configuration tab here, I changed the voltage scale to 234 or 235. Uh, these settings I left the same. And on the current meter, I set that to 500. Although I hear you can use 380, but I worked it up to 500 and I thought that was pretty good. Uh, your your mileage may vary. Okay, then in addition to that, in the MWOSD configuration tool, I went ahead and set the voltage alarm to 10.1 so that it wouldn't keep blinking on me all the time. It was too high before. And then I set the use FC main voltage. I set that to green right here. Turn that on and also display voltage is turned on. I found out the voltage adjust didn't really matter when I was using the FC voltage so I just left that the same. I think the same goes for the battery cells but I put it on three anyway. But I don't think these two do anything when you use the FC main voltage. So those two green, this one on 10.1 and then for the amp years I just have the alarm set up about a hundred. I don't ever plan on on using that many amps with my little plane anyway. But you can set that where you feel. The other things I really don't think they do that much again. I'm going to use FC amperage. Make sure that's green and display amps is green. So that's what you have to do for that. So sorry for the length of this video, but there was a lot to go over. So right now we've got the OSD working with the artificial horizon, battery voltage is current, and the barometer is working so you can see the altitude. So we've got that far, it could be used right now. Uh, I've also gone over how to set the battery voltages as well, and how to update the OSD firmware. So that's it for this video. In the next video we'll be getting into some more details on how to set it up for the plane. I'm going to put it onto the plane and then fly it and maybe get some flight video. Take your flight.